I don't love the story because someone died, but I love the story because them rich people are a bunch of drug addicts and they're doctors. I done told y'all. I don't know why anybody call me crazy. Um, I go, has anything I ever said has been wrong? Rarely, rarely. There's a rare day that I got misinformation. Um, no, but I was saying from the mid nineties, there was these doctors not only were they preying on women, mostly some women from out of the country, they were supplying drugs, but I don't know what drug, I don't know what the hell was going on in, in this one portion. And I was like, uh, I got some question about these doctors because these doctors be coming up into the human trafficking, right? So that matters because they're a bunch of criminals and then they were using their position of power to like take advantage of girls because government here didn't want to give a medical to women and then so in the mix of this they're giving prescriptions but you know i'm totally at that time i was really like i don't want to take meds I, I would prefer not to unless it's like dire and then like i'll take you know a penicillin or something you know if i was like really sick but um i try not to get involved in any of this other stuff because there was a lot of people that were taking some other stuff. And one time I took something that I didn't need. And I was just reading a um, thing on the wall. And I said, oh, yeah, I relate to that. I have that problem, you know. Um, maybe I should try that. Yeah, I was so stupid. Is the marketing of it. And I tried it. And it made me just not great. It made me not feel good. Nothing, nothing. And it wasn't for me. And no. So I didn't need it. But they gave it to me, you guys. And, um, and it wasn't any of these uh, more addictive things or anything like that, but there's been a lot of stories. Okay. So then later, you know, during this, uh, jam bullshit with LAPD, um, the ERs were trying to force down medicine that was addictive. And I'm really funny about that. It's a, I, it would be a rare day that I would get addicted to this stuff. Let me just put it that way. But I don't want to play with that at all, just generally. I don't even want to take that chance. But the chance of me getting addicted to any of that crap is like zero, almost a zero. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, so then they forced it on me. And then, you know, my frustration with all this. But at the time, they didn't really look at that type of, that type of medicine as being drugs, right? They didn't classify it in street drugs. Yet everybody was abusing this stuff so i started talking about it uh yeah around 2008 or so and yeah there's a lot to it like there's a lot of ignorance in it from that point but we just started talking about it it was like oh this is going on these gotta be trying to do that and everybody's taking it i don't want it you know it's more like this thing but then i'm like i'm aware that they're trying to force it on you like candy Apparently, yeah, there's a lot more to this because there's people around me that have actually been investigated by the Fed. I guess the feds. I don't know, by somebody for this conduct right here. And I was like, I ain't have nothing to do with that. I ain't have nothing to do with that. I didn't even know that. I'll be jammed. You know, so then, so then, yeah, I have to like push myself away from that because government doesn't give shit what i say government will see something and go oh we see that there was this going on and you had an interaction with yeah okay so this is government we know they're bullshit i ain't even gonna be pinned up like that i don't even know if anything's going on with that thing but i was like uh no <laughs> and i'm the one that's always talking about it so it's kind of just like what the hell okay so in this case this case we'll get right down to it so we knew that he would be do drugs the whole time, right? So I said a friend of mine used to run into him. I don't know. I guess he was effed up the whole time at Jep's bar. Now, we all know Jep and them are promoting drugs, and they're very openly uh, drug addicts over there. So you have to question, like, why half these people that go to Jep's bar are a bunch of drug addicts and die there and all kinds of shit. And there was all this underground drug activity. And, yeah, I'm not a snitch because I'm not part of any of their goddamn groups. So... Here's the thing, because I'm a victim in this whole thing, and I viewed it, I watched it, and the people that I met that were related to the doctor thing, actually, I ran across them at the Rainbow, and that place is a hellhole of a drug den, 
And so I was like, I don't know how they interacted. I don't know if it was a thing that Doctor was at the rainbow. I have no idea. Then they're related to Don Dawkins. So I went into this other thing. I was like, see, there's some bullshit up in here. They want to cover up their asses to high heaven, okay? So they're going to say all kinds of evil about me. They're going to they're going to spread rumors. They're going to they're going to manipulate a story. And I've talked about everybody knows that the GNR people are a bunch of drug addicts. So yes, the other gang, the other oh my gang, the other um drug ring had relations to all those people. Now allegedly those people had some uh doctor meds as well, but uh at that time it wasn't as uh i don't know if it's not as that it wasn't as big of a problem then or just it wasn't as a focus because in the early 90s taking doctor meds was totally fine and legal you could totally down that crap like no other nobody cared so that might be why it wasn't you know this main focus then but i don't recall people saying that they were doing all this other stuff so that's just me i didn't do it so and it wasn't actually uh in my face so i can't really speak much on that at that time in that time frame right there so five charges and in drug investigation into matthew perry's ketamine death the actor died from acute effects of ketamine and there was another d-lister out here that apparently was doing all that crap too yeah there there's actually so much stuff in that i go yeah isn't it funny the people that are trying to take me down are the ones that are part of all this kind of crap yeah I didn't, I'd never done ketamine. I don't even know what the hell that shit is. I keep reading it, but I've never done it. And I hear people promoting that crap. And I'm like, I, I, I you know what I mean? I, I was like, I, I'm trying to keep a clean life here, you know, as much as we can. By the way, did you read my post that some homeless lady broke into my backyard last night and took a dip in my kiddie pool? Yeah, that shit was crazy. And she was drunk as a skunk and then just strolled on out. I was like, that real did that really happen? <laughs> yeah, dude. Now I gotta go clean my pool after I do this. But um five people have been charged in connection with ketamine uh with the ketamine death, the friend star Matthew Perry. Three other defendants, including a doctor, have already pled guilty to federal drug charges in connection with this death, while two others, including a second doctor and a woman known as the Ketamine Queen, who is accused of selling Perry the batch of ketamine that killed him. Uh, we're arrested on Thursday, according to the Department of Justice. Uh, yeah, when government actually does something, but, you know, what do we do about this 1990s thing that actually caused the LAPD to target me to high heaven until today? You know what I mean? Uh, U.S. Attorney Martin Estrada said, investigators conducted a wide-ranging investigation following Perry's death in October 2023 that revealed a broad underground criminal network. Yeah, no shit, I've been saying. The whole fucking L.A. County is a fucking mafia. Fucking what the hell is this shit? Including the government. Because if government is covering up a drug ring, you're part of a network. And that's what caused all my stuff. So I'm owed. You guys, I am owed massively. Okay? But this is my thing. I go, I've never been busted for drugs. I've never been in a fucking treatment program. I've never been deemed crazy. I never had a crazy episode. Though you could call me crazy when I get pissed off at your asses. But that's not a crazy episode. That's me getting fucking pissed. So, no, I've never been 5150. I've never had any of these things. And people have been spreading around things because they have used me for money and or things that they can get you people rides everything and when they set me up in situations and or they lose a situation they have government here has broke the laws like a bazillion times this case right here is basically a similar thing from the 1990s where government just sat back and is like, we're going to cover up a drug ring. We're going to ignore that Michael Jackson Dean was dragged to the hell inside of this and some other shit. Though we're going to claim that we did a thorough investigation when they did not. And I got raped like two dozen times and they're sitting there trying to play this shit game. Then I came out later and said that there was these drug doctors. And then what did they do? Nothing. I mean, it's like, what the hell? 
and there's a take of them because the doctors don't necessarily cater to the me's because I don't have money to pay them. The only way that I could get away with being part of some bullshit like that is if when they're trying to demand sex and some type of exchanges like that, and they'll take advantage of a girl like that. But typically what they're doing is they're targeting the rich because what is it all about at the end of the day? Money, right? Money. Who has the money? Fucking rich people. I'm not the one that has 55K to pay down to these damn idiots. I would have to do a lot of sex to pay for that off. You know what I mean? If you look at it like that, because I was like, yeah, why did they target the poor black people? When in reality, the people who are funneling the drug thing is rich people. I mean, it's like common sense. They're the ones that have the money. They're the ones that are not even looked at. You hear Whoopi Goldberg going, God, you know, I walked into this party and they just had, you know, bowls of drugs. And we know that the government ain't going to be looking at us. And I'm just like, this is insanity. And they're just out and proud talking about it. Like, ain't no big thing. I'm like, dude, U.S. attorney. Okay, so we said that. And then they revealed a broad underground criminal network responsible for distributing large quantities of ketamine to Mr. Perry and others. Others. The lead defendants in the case are Josveen Saga also known as the Ketamine Queen, and Dr. Salvador Placentia. Is that really his last name? <laughs> Placentia? Okay, a licensed medical doctor known as Dr. P, um, who are expected to be arraigned later Thursday. The three separately charged in the case, including Perry's live-in assistant, Kenneth Awamaza, Dr. Martin Chavez, a licensed medical doctor, and Eric Fleming, who admitted in court documents that he distributed the ketamine that killed Perry, the DOJ said. Eric Fleming. Uh, is that a common name? That name's kind of familiar. Okay. These defendants took advantage of Mr. Perry's addiction issues to enrich themselves. Estrada said during a press briefing on Thursday, they knew what they were doing and were risking great danger to Mr. Perry, but they did it anyway. Aren't all these assholes are a bunch of sociopaths? That's what I said. I go, I, I don't know too many. Okay. Not all drug addicts are sociopaths. Uh, Matthew Perry here has uh, quite a history of some garbage, but uh, yeah, but there are people that like legitimately like they're trying to get well. And then there's these assholes that come in just like this. Strada said that in the fall of 2023, Perry had struggled with addiction in the past, fell back into addiction, and these defendants took advantage for to profit for themselves. Exactly. Placentia is accused of distributing approximately 20 vials of ketamine to Perry in exchange for 55k in cash. And government said they don't go after cash. Okay, so I just want to make this clear. I reported multi-government crimes where um, I tell government, and they're like, cash cash we don't go after cash cash is too hard to follow you know what i mean so i was like oh yeah you know uh most crimes are done in cash estrada said placentia allegedly worked with chavez to obtain ketamine and with owama saw to distribute the ketamine to perry placentia saw as th this as an opportunity to profit off of mr perry Noting that the doctor, this was pretty messed up. When I skimmed the story, I was like, oh, damn. The doctor allegedly wrote in text messages, I wonder how much this moron will pay. And that he wanted to be the actor's go-to for drugs. These people are such sociopaths. Everybody up in here. Anybody involved in this, like, drug ding the underground world of this they're fucking sociopaths i'm dead serious and they will lie their asses off and these doctors will lie on paperwork like crazy i've tried to report dozens of doctors for bad conduct and i can't get a single one of them down and and there was actually a doctor um that was involved with some side stuff that actually was involved in this universe allegedly or at least they thought he was 
and they blocked him from all these things. He can't sell, he can't give a patients like stuff at certain places and their conduct outside of work is insane. And they didn't care. I was like, I, what? Yeah, you can't get him, you guys. You can't get him. Government's acting all like high and mighty right here. But when you're trying to actually get them, like during this conduct, like if I found out this stuff and I told government, they wouldn't even have cared. They would have been like, um, we can't do anything about their outside patient. Yeah, they would have done this whole thing, you guys. It is so insane. And I go, I, I'm done even reporting to government because every time I do, they just enable it and then they wait till someone dies and then they fake present and do this type of shit right here, okay? So instead of the prevention of this type of situation, they sit there and go, uh, they blow it off and they're like, we can't do nothing, it's fine, go somewhere else and nothing, 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 nothing. Yeah, I just want to be transparent about pile of shit government. As a doctor, he knew that the danger of what he was doing and Perry was spiraling out of control with his addiction. Yeah, but it's about the money, you know what I mean? They're sociopaths. Nonetheless, anybody that's sitting there, their whole focus is money. Um, socio, uh, yeah, basically, because they're going to do anything. But America is created by sociopaths, so they made a system made perfectly for sociopaths. And then they brag about how they got all this money, and it's like, yeah, but you're a sociopath, and you're a sociopath that ran over people to get that money. That's the only way you're going to be able to in America. That's it. There's no debate about it. You had to run over people in order to get money. None, nonetheless, another than less, he continued to offer him the drugs. Okay, so other lead defendant, Sangha, is accused of selling 50 vials of ketamine for approximately 11K in cash. More cash. Over two weeks of Perry. That's a lot. Jesus Christ. Working with that, they stole, man, the amount of money they stole off me in the six week period was insane. Even for the 1990s, it was more than that. I mean, the total of like all my stuff, the total of what they did to my car, uh, stealing my court money, stealing my work money. Yeah, it was more, it was probably uh up in, it was around that amount in six weeks you guys in 1992 and that's just me there was a million other people they were thieving off of working with fleming and iwamasa to distribute the drugs of perry according to estrada she's accused of selling perry the batch of ketamine that killed him perry died on october 28 2023 at the age of 54 he was discovered unresponsive in a jacuzzi an autopsy report revealed he died from acute effects of ketamine. After his death, some of the co-conspirators allegedly talked about distancing themselves from the actor and deleting evidence on their phones. The defendants allegedly used encrypted messaging and coded language referring to ketamine as Dr. Pepper. Okay, to distribute their drugs according to the indictment. The indictment alleged that the two doctors were the initial source of Perry's ketamine supply, but at one point, federal officials believe the drugs became too expensive and Perry switched to a new source, including Sangha, a federal source set. Perry had high levels of ketamine in his blood, likely lapsed into unconsciousness, and then went underwater. He was reported to have been receiving ketamine infusions with de for depression and anxiety, and I would never take any of that for anxiety. Are you guys crazy? Uh, with the most recent therapy coming one and a half weeks before his death. However, the medical examiner wrote ketamine in his system at death could not have been from the infusion therapy. As ketamine's half-life is three to four hours or less. Well, if it's only three to four hours, how's that for anxiety, dude? That shit is like, it's just, just bullshit. His method of intake was listed in the report as unknown. The autopsy report also listed drowning. So he wouldn't have died necessarily if he wasn't in that damn jacuzzi. But okay, so the manner of death was ruled an accident. Okay, prescription drugs. The loose pills were found at his home, but nothing near where he was found dead. Multiple agencies have been investigating in the months since his death, including the DEA, Los Angeles Police Department. Perry was known for playing... Chandler, and then, okay, the actor's family, which includes the mother, stepfather, all these people. 
Okay. What do you guys think of that? These doctors are such piles of shit and they're the richest people in the state. Some, some of the richest people in our state. And government has done nothing. We can't even take them down. I'm telling you, I, I told you they're worse than the cops, actually, believe it or not. I go, I've had to fight the cops and I've actually won some cases there. But the medical field, there was another story actually in Utah, which dealt with um, doctors basically raping women for gyno things. And I was like, and they said that you can't go after it. It's not, you can't have sexual assault under medical something weird um but i've been having the worst time of them they sexually abused me actually in the system and they just allowed the doctor to do it and they assume it's all men and i was like no actually on this one it was a woman i go you know like it turned into this thing i go well what's happened you just let a predator female go and harm the hispanic community because basically that's who goes to that lady and I was just like, I'm in an area temporarily and I have to go get a doctor. And so I was like thrown to this like jalopy place that it was like a hole in the wall in a shopping center. And this lady does this. And I was like, I'm here for my arm. I injured my arm. Why are you trying to go down my pants, lady? So you're not safe regardless of the gender. I got to see who these people are because I'm just like, what the hell, dude? I know there are always these like foreign people, though, too, like the doctors. This is crazy. I don't even know. I don't know because I'm not in the medical. I used to work in the medical field. OK, but I'm not a doctor, so I didn't go to medical school. Um, So I don't know how this works. Like if they get education in another country, do they just let them transfer here and then work? Or I don't know, because I've been seeing some questionable things. And I was like, yeah, because in other countries, their medical thing is different and they do legal stuff over there. And um, I don't know. So I'm reading names here that you could tell they're not uh, mm, technically probably from here or their family line. I don't know. So no, but I did. I actually pulled out some doctors where they went to medical school outside this country and then i'm questioning so do they have to do anything here or do they just let them work here i don't know i'm not in that field so i have no idea but i seen it and i was like well i don't know what they did afterwards so yeah i heard of this chick i mean she's like some few years younger than me but what the hell okay so we got a bunch of gen x a-holes up in here that were part of it but we have this drug dealer chick that is just like, what? Okay. She's 41. And I guess she was using her residence there to get a bunch of drugs. There she is right there. Do you guys recognize her? <laughs> I was like, I don't know who she is. When I lived there, I all I did was work. And I, I stayed home a lot and I worked all day long, all night long. And then I go to the store, do you my bullshit? go back work that's all i did so once in a while like you know these cases pop up like the other guy um that was on that veronica closet thing i go the guy's familiar and apparently he was preying on us over there uh all the ladies you know in the noho area and i go i don't i don't remember anybody doing that to me in that portion so um i'm not really clear but here's the other thing about that North Hollywood is ultra focused on gang bangers and drugs. And yet, do you see who the real problem is? Like legitimately the real problem here, because somebody like her can get like a tank of drugs into the area and then transfer it over to some other person. And then those people could sell it for higher prices, like on the street. They could do a whole bunch of things like there's a lot in this stuff and i was just like yeah well somebody has to have money first off so it's gonna be a rich person and that's it that's just how it's been going y'all so i was like i don't know why the public the public just hates people just generally so they just promote go target the poor i'm like the poor can't even afford this crap you know and that's why half of them are probably homeless because they can't afford she pay these people 
the amount that they charge for the drugs that they're, you know, pilfering out here. So show me the homeless person that spent 55K. I mean, if they had 55K, they don't have it anymore. And that's not going to be going on for that long. I mean, they, they're not going to be able to keep up with that type of thing. I don't care how many cans you do, how many, you have to do a lot of, lot of, lot of burglary. Though there is one guy running around saying that he has a drug problem and he's breaking into places. So, you know, maybe him. Uh, they call it the Sanga Stash House. And the store packages distribute narcotics, including ketamine and methamphetamines. She's a meth head. The indictment states that they knew that the unsupervised and improper use of ketamine can be deadly. Oh, and she allegedly sold a drug to another customer, Cody McLowry, who died of a drug overdose. After a family member of McLowry sent Sanga a text message saying that her ketamine had killed McLowry, and Sanga conducted a Google search for can ketamine be listed as a cause of death. I mean, is she this stupid? Okay, um, allegedly used signal to message defendant Eric Fleming that her ketamine was high quality. And offered a sample to Perry. And I have more if he likes it. Oh, that's the typical Luro thing right there. Do you like it? Now it's going to cost. Ketamine lollipops as an add-on. I never heard of any of this crap, you guys. I've been learning about all these different drugs in the last couple days. We have the Indian drink drug where you see shit, and then we got this. I was like, lollipop? People are nuts. Okay. 42, Placet, Salvador, Placet, yeah, 42. Mark Chavez, 54. Gen X, P P Perry's living assistant, Kenneth. Now, somebody did say on Kenneth, um, and drug dealer, Eric Fleming. I'm like, do I know Eric Fleming? <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's just a common name. Maybe that's just why. I was like, I hope I don't. Uh, he's 54. Um, uh, no, Kenneth is his assistant. And the question is, they, they, like, they were saying it like this. And I was like, yeah, to a point you can agree with this. But again, if you partake in this conduct, there's always a risk that someone's going to die. And they were saying that he's paid to do his job. True, but... In my case, the assistant to the celebrity, he's paid to do a job too, right? But he was being a predator and the boss let him be a predator. So, okay, so you have an argument there to say that he's just doing his job because his boss wants him to do it. And maybe he was under the impression that the treatments that he's giving him is part of some other thing. But. You have to look at it like this, you guys. He was with them for, it said 25 years. And the whole time, Matthew Perry's a big-ass drug addict. So he actually viewed it. So you, you, you know what's going on, you guys. Mostly if you're an assistant and a live-in assistant. So you, you can't, I, I would not want to put him into the position of playing dumb. Because you're trying to say that somebody that lives with them doesn't know all the drug dealers, doesn't see that conduct going on, and then he partakes in it some which way, shape, or form, and then somebody died. The thing is, is that these people, as I was saying, I go, there's so many enablers out here that they literally will say it's okay that you did that. Just like when you're seeing Oprah's little friend over there sitting there patting Justin uh, Timberlake on the back for being a drunk. You know, and then you see the Sharon Stone sitting there doing this bullshit. These are enablers that would literally let everybody get harmed just because of their own selfish reasons, okay? And they will enable somebody to go drink and drive. They will enable people to go do drugs and harm other people. Um, there's so many people out here that are like that, and I just happen to run into all of them. And um, then they get you harmed, right? And then government doesn't look into, like, how did this happen, right? So we had a situation where it was like there was a question of arsenic, but there was some other additions to the story. And they had a drug dealer coming into the facility at our job. And so every single asshole at my job is going to lie because they're buying shit from that guy in the back. 
And the girl, I don't know, there was a lot of questions to it because it seems that it was a purposeful act now versus that what people thought, oh, maybe because you know, because she does that stuff and somehow accidentally this bullshit. So our perception at the time was, oh, some kind of accident because like, who would try to kill me? You know, like who would try to harm me? You know, but her actions even prior to me ending up there. So LAPD didn't even question it. And she's freaking out. I'm going to tell law enforcement about her. And so she was trying to ward me off from going to the hospital. And I kept calling her. I go, what is going on? You know, because she's the last person I was with. And yeah, it turned into that thing. So every pile of shit at my job, most of them anyway, were getting stuff from this guy in the back. Now, to what extent, what they were getting, I don't know. You know, they were doing all this stuff and I was aware of it and I was concerned about it and our boss didn't know about it. Allegedly, he didn't know about it because he's this old 80 some odd year old guy and he's up front and they would have some guy come meet him up in the back and they'd be doing this shit. And I'm like, oh my God, all I could see is a big old drug bust here one day, one day. So, um. Yeah, so when it happened, they were trying to do all this stuff, and then they tried to kidnap me. That's what I was saying. I go, then they were trying to cover up the crime there. And LAPD did everything to cover that up, didn't even investigate it. Then I had to go get all these biopsies done in my mouth, and then they considered it that it was most likely um, arsenic. And I'm like, who the fuck is giving me arsenic? Right? I wouldn't give myself arsenic. I didn't even know how to get arsenic. You would have to sit there and find that I got arsenic from some place. And so then they had to rule out that it wasn't cancer. I'm like, it's not fucking cancer. It happened on this night. And I know the people that were involved. And it happened to be a night that everybody knew, or at least she knew, that my roommate would take off out of town. And I'm just like, this happened when my roommate's gone? Some doctors believe that ketamine can treat anxiety and depression. Obviously not. And he, keep, he kept doing it. And no. That's why I started studying the how to treat anxiety and panic attacks. Because it was an area that wasn't really treaded upon very well. And people were assuming um, panic attacks was the same as having stress. And I go, no, that's a very different thing. And... Um, that's a very different thing. And they were calling me crazy. And because I went to go get therapy for it. And they didn't understand that I have to leave a situation if I'm having a panic attack. That's not being crazy. And the doctors had to tell people I'm not crazy. So people, anybody spreading that shit around um, literally needs to be dragged into a gutter. And I'll be happy to do it. Um, so I started promoting that people should seek therapy. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean you're crazy because you seek therapy. I had to seek therapy because I couldn't uh, be as productive as I used to be when that started happening. And it tailed off because of the incident of what that girl did. So it was a cause and effect. So because somebody did something to where I could have died, um, I started having panic attacks. So yeah, as any normal person would, because what the hell? And so I uh, they thought, they thought maybe also as being triggered because they didn't know what was in my system. So as they kept going, they're like, arsenic, do you feed yourself all these things? And I started tasting metal at a later point. And so there was a couple of other people in here that were criminals that also could have been part of that because, um, we found rat poison, right? But when I told the poison control about the rat poison, they said that that's not arsenic. Um, I don't know if they said cyanide. They said some other thing. So they said it wouldn't have been in the rat poison. So that got a little confusing there because we know that that did happen and I had to uh, rescue some kids in that home and there was drugs everywhere. So I was like, yeah, if any other situation, that actually happened right after this incident. So I was like, oh yeah, the guy like totally was doing this. So, um... 
No, but it actually did tail off from the very first thing in January of 2004. And then I had to go get treatment and to help me um, to be able to deal with, go into situations and deal with the panic attacks. You can't control the panic attacks, uh, regardless of what people tell you. Um, the it's a natural reaction to it, it's like any other thing so if you if you see a, a damn lion all of a sudden out in your yard and you're back there you're going to automatically have a response right so it's a natural response from your body to fight or flight and it'll come when it perceives danger and so because of that um it'll happen in situations that you don't even know and so it's kind of uncontrollable and to try to kind of work through that you have to kind of figure out try to figure out like why it's triggering in certain situations and to somehow you have to kind of work through it to like let your body know that you're not in danger but it does it naturally as a self-protection and it was very difficult to understand that going through that and so when i was studying it um um, and all the different treatments that they, they had at that time, um, it was very difficult because the, like some of the other cases were Vietnam vets, right? So they, uh, you know, they couldn't leave their house. They couldn't do all these things. And, uh, people pretty much use other people as a crutch for the rest of their life. And I was looking at that and I go, I'm not going to do that. There's no way in hell I'm going to live like that. And I don't have somebody to crutch on anyway. So do we have this choice? No, I have to go to the goddamn store. I don't have anybody to go to shopping for me. So I have to get to the fucking store. I'm going to starve to death, right? But I was having these attacks when I went into the store and waiting in line. And then I have to leave. And it was a really unfortunate thing. But it was a tail off because of the incident. So I just want to put that out there. But no, I wouldn't be taking no drugs to fucking help me with fucking anxiety. Nothing. And in fact, the drugs that did work, um, unfortunately, have been abused by drug addicts. So they remove the thing. This is bullshit. They remove the things that actually worked for panic attacks all because of drug addicts. And I'm sitting here like, just because I'm taking it doesn't mean I'm a drug addict. I was like, we're taking it and we don't even take the full dosage only when needed. And then now they refuse to give it. And now they don't have anything that fucking works. Do you guys know this? They have nothing that works. The stuff that they gave me was some fucking, uh, I don't know, it made me ill. Like, it's almost like when you're about to fall asleep and your body jolts. They gave me some shit that was doing that and it was really bad. And you can't, um, you could function, but you don't feel right. And then they gave me another one that just is garbage. It's like taking nothing. And so just for general anxiety, so none of those medications work, you guys. Uh, you can get a, what do they call it? A placebo effect. So I assume a lot of people that are taking that stuff uh, probably mentally think it's helping. I don't know, but it actually wasn't. I only had like one day where I felt like really good and then the 30 40 60 days no and then one was making me lose my memory and i was like holy shit i don't even know my password you know i was like it was all crazy no it's very bad so that's why i got into it i was interested in studying about that and uh, i was thinking of helping people treat it if i could figure out the right methods to that thing i did find a lot though uh how did how to work through that um and it's definitely not what drugs you cannot use drugs if you want to get over the panic attack thing um they're gonna tell you otherwise but the thing is is that you have to train yourself that let your body know that you're not in danger and you can't be just totally drugged out because it, I don't know, you just have to be completely sober, sober city. And you have to slowly work through that thing and it's horrible. And you have to go through this horrible like type of steps and you have to push yourself like you would on any fitness program. You have to push yourself through these steps 
and eventually your body goes, oh, I'm not in danger anymore, so I don't need to react. You have to keep doing that. The meds, if you do get meds, I'm not saying don't take meds at all, but if you do get meds, it's a temporary solution, but it's not a corrector. You can correct it, but it, it uh, you know, and it can come back, but I've never had a panic attack out of control since that time. So it's been, what, 20 years? Uh, I went, well, maybe not 20 years. It's been like 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. Now, if I do have a panic attack today, it's actually out of a legitimate reason. Like there is real danger, boom, and then it goes away. That's what you're supposed to have. You're not supposed to try to get rid of it. It's supposed to go back into its proper order, right? Like how it's supposed to um, trigger. So like if you see like a tsunami, um, you should probably run. And if you get a panic attack in it, it would be normal. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like it's happening for the proper reasons versus I'm in a store standing in line. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm going to die. You know, it doesn't, that shouldn't be going on. Ketamine, I would assume for me, would make me feel like I was going to die and I would have a panic attack. That would be the end of it. Because it's something abnormal. Because the the reason why the panic attacks came to begin with is because somebody believes they gave me arsenic in this other thing. So um, my body's going to be like, oh no, something foreign's in my body and I'm going to die and I'm freaked out. And yeah, that's where it will happen. So I actually can't do that because it would actually, in fact, cause me anxiety thinking I'm going to die because I'm doing ketamine. Which I guess in some way is good because I won't be taking none of that and I have no desire to take any of that, but I already know what the effects would be on me by doing that. So another thing is because it's a high profile case, they don't care about any of these poor people dying on the street from ODs. Where are they getting the drugs? Where are they getting the drugs? Government. They're buying it from somebody. They're buying it through avenues. They're not buying it from poor people, though they because if you're selling it, you're and that's sure the situation of the drug dealer that I was talking about. So the drug dealer had a shitload of money go through him. So he was allegedly buying and then selling, but he was also doing. So it's like he's buying, selling, doing all the profits and then doing that thing. Like, you know, it was like this thing. So then he lived from place to place. Um, and so he lived with other people all the time. So he gripped it, right? He's still grifting. Um, the, that's that's kind of the thing with these guys. But typically, though, no, they have places like all of them had a, an apartment. It was a shitty one, but they had so much money they could have bought a house at that time. Uh, but they're so fried in their brain, I guess that that you know the way that they I don't know you know I mean that thing right there. Uh, that would have been the first thing I would have done if I had money like that. But um, yeah, they took it all and. I didn't even know how much a house was at that time because I was so young. I was still a minor. And I thought that was something that I'd have to wait years and years and years to do. And then when I realized like how much they took from me, I was like, wow, that would have been a nice down payment on a house that the average house price back then, even up north, I think it was like $50,000 or something. Fuck. But I didn't want a little bread and butter house at that time. I was like, I want to get me a big McMansion. Yeah, you know, it was like every kid's dream back then. But um, no, but I actually, I didn't know how much any of that was. And then I just, you know, money came really easily back in the 90s, you guys. Money today is not easy. It's very difficult to even get like 20 bucks. The crazy thing is back then... If I just went up to some guy and I was like, oh, you know what? I need a hotel to stay for tonight because, you know, give them, you know, the story. Um, they would pop out fucking 50 bucks on me. They wouldn't even think twice about it. It was the craziest thing because I was like, you know how easy money was? I, we would go around because we we're trying to get away from those people and they caused this situation. And I was like, yeah, we need to get some gas money. So it was like nothing for people to throw up. Five, $5 was probably about a pretty average minimum. Oh my God. If I went out right now and tried to get five bucks from somebody, I would get chewed out. 
one guy I asked for a quarter one time and he's like, uh, yeah, no. And I was like, what the hell? And he drove off in a Mercedes. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So the temperature of that time is very different from today. It was so easy. You could have probably sat there and panhandled your way into an apartment. I mean, if we were that gung ho on that thing, we're minors. So it wouldn't have been, it would have been just. The homeless people had a lot of money out there. That's what I was saying. I go, I was so crazy. I go, that when I'm looking back at the situation, it's actually very different from today where these people technically really don't have the money to move anywhere. Back then, people had a shitload of money, and there was a number of reasons. Uh, like, I want to talk about the vets. Yeah, like, because they were ill, and they didn't have the help to treat them. You know what I mean? And so the dude was getting his pension. I don't know. He was getting money. So every time he got it, he just shoved it away in his shoes. I was like, what the hell, dude? Yeah. But he ha he could have done something. Uh, I was trying to remember what his excuse was. It was something like he didn't want to deal with all the... Uh, maybe, maybe like the tax thing, the rent thing. Just dealing with that whole, you know being a responsible human, like having to do all those things. And he just, he was like one of these hippie dippy looking Moses dudes. As I, I was so interesting because I would have been scared to death to show anybody I had a stack of money on me, but he didn't, he trusted me. He was just like, yeah, he's like, I fought in the war, some bullshit, some bullshit. He was really old then. And he didn't try to touch me, y'all. <laughs> I was like, unlike these other fools. Uh, he was probably from... That dude was probably born in 1900. Like, to be honest. Because you're talking about, like, 90-something. The dude was, like... I don't know. Sometimes they look a lot older because they were out there for a while. Um, He had to be somewhere in the late 60s, 70s. Even could have been early 80s. That's how old that guy was. And they th probably threw him in a mass grave. I didn't know they were doing none of that. I'm not for none of this shit. Okay, so what are the comments on this lady? Because I could go up on a whole side thing. Let me see. But I'm just talking about the era of the drug war. Because the drug war in the early 90s was all focused on poor, poor people. Poor blacks. Diversity is strength. And all the people involved were very diverse. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks to the open borders. Okay. So I knew it was probably going to go there. But no, the point is, is that these people, the people that they're focused on, I've been saying, I couldn't stress this anymore. The people that they've been focused on have been all the wrong people. Because even if the poor were doing drugs, they're getting it from a higher up. And the higher up is the rich. And when I was dealing with this ring, I go, it was all like rich people. It's all people mid-class on up, mid-class on up, because the places they were going to were like decent homes and fucking WeHo, and they're going down, you know, just all over the place, and there's celebrity rock stars and fucking, you know, this thing, and I'm like, but I didn't experience no homeless guy coming up getting drugged. The homeless guys are out there homeless. They're just sleeping on a corner. Doesn't mean that they aren't doing it, but they can't afford that shit. Not what these people were doing. But for me, I was saying, I go, there was so much drugs out there that I don't even know who had to pay because as you see in here, they, they used to talk about this when we were kids. They're like, they're going to lead you in and give you some free dope. You know, like they used to say, that's what we were kids. And then they'll lead you in with some free dope. And then they get you hooked. And then you have to go back and buy it, right? Uh, in this situation that I was in, it was everywhere. Like, I could have went, like, if I was a total addict, I could have went from him, got it free. Then I could have went uh, to this other place that I found, all free. Then I could find another person, all free. And then everybody wants a party, so it's all free. Then I can go to the rainbow, and it's all free. Yeah, that's why I was like, it, w it was crazy. 
Uh, Tori Spelling brought up the thing with Charlie Sheen, but everybody's like, oh, we should expect that. We all know he's a drug addict. But I think her point, her point there was that it was all free. And she walked in and he just offered her crack. And I was like, yeah, that that's totally it. And then she said no. And I go, yeah, isn't it weird? Because I was like, the thing is, we didn't even know what the hell crack was back then because they didn't even tell the kids what that was. So I was like, we, I don't recall that in our hometown. If it was there, we don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so yeah, they, they offered it free. And kids, you know, if they're really experimental, because some were, um, they may have done it. Because it's free. They just offered the kids it. And I'm sitting here going, oh my god, I'm so lucky, man. Luckily, I had, like, I had a limit here. Because, like, at some point, we were just a little, you know, we were partying it up a little bit out here, you know, in a, in a portion. But, um, uh, no, we didn't do none of that. And we were not addicts. So, that's what I was saying. I go, I don't know who's trying to sit there and try to pin me as some bullshit like that. I go, can you show where that happened? Any situation that had happened to me in any realm of any of that is because there's a perpetrator involved and somebody did something to me and then that okay so those people should have been arrested and they were not who covered it up the cops the cops covered it up and i would swear on a fucking bible even though i hate the bible i would swear on your bible i will swear in a court of law the cops covered it up and so it's telling you there's an underground um thing going on and for doctors to be doing this i said it's very difficult to bust the doc i've been trying to bust them all okay we're transparent because nobody should be doing this right if you're a law-abiding citizen you would be on my side about this stuff i cannot bust them government had made i don't know they're making all kinds of legal arguments the last legal argument they gave me was so crazy that I was like, uh, you're supposed to care. I could sue you. Like if it was happening to me, like the situation that I'm saying I witnessed, uh, they were trying to make a legal argument that they have, they have no anything to it. And it, what they do there is doesn't matter. Something like that. That's like the summary of what they were trying to say in their legal argument. And I'm like, no, but you're going to get fucking sued if something bad happens to these people. You know, like the conduct, the conduct. So it was like, I, you know what? It's very difficult. And I don't think that even lawyers have very good um, track records at going at them like that. Um because like the argument there it's like what am i gonna say like they're making this stance i mean i don't know what a retort would be to it like you're full of shit i mean <laughs> good i'm glad some of these hanger on or drug dealers to the stars are getting arrested for his debt they feed on the weakness of others and make money exactly why do you think i got raped and all that shit happened why did you the public I'm not saying you particularly because I don't know who you are. Why do you, the public, think that I put that information out and say that I'm doing it to get famous? That absolutely makes no sense. Me putting that information out makes me a target. A deadly serious target. Mostly if I'm touching on something this dark. Because in that underworld is a bunch of clowns um i'm <laughs> like a bunch of clowns where you're talking about government law enforcement celebrities people with a lot of money doctors with a tank of power you're talking about a lot of these things and you have also mafias you have gang members you have all these different things though in our case here that we're talking about i don't believe actual like the street gangs that they were talking about i don't think that they were involved in this because if they were, they would have had a problem with me and they would have been going after me all over the place because of, you know, that thing. Oh, we've got to take her down because she's going to be outing. You know what I mean? They would have a major issue with me and they didn't. And it was actually them trying to get me away from them. 
And I was sitting there going, this is weird. I mean, they could have a, uh, like on their street thing, they could have a rival because they don't want them there. So that may be the case in that thing. Um, so I can't answer it. I just know that they had issues with them. And so I was like, well, I know I'm not treading on them because they were trash talking them to high heaven. So I should be okay there. And, but I was saying there were some strange connections with this other thing going on. And I was like, I don't understand that other thing. And then, um, then you have people like P Diddy, right? Who obviously is funneling some shit up in there. And so you have a situation like that and nobody on the inside there is going to be snitching because they are part of the group. And so, you know, and then they all would go down. So it would just turn into this thing. So if you're outing something like that, yeah, they're going to have a major problem with you. And then they're going to try to do things. And when they try to do things, you may not live. So no, why would I, it doesn't make any sense when I put that information out that somebody tried to accuse me of being famous. I was like, that absolutely is the furthest thing from the truth of what happened here. And it totally disregarded the rapes and the harm that happened to me. And the amount of money that government owes me from that situation because they covered up the crime, right? So because government interjected itself into it and they covered up the crime and didn't rescue me from it and took money in addition to cover up the crime, they owe me. So they want to play a game here. And yeah, I do believe the stem off mainly comes around that because that was the only thing that happened here when I came here. As far as any dark, you know, underworld shit going on, that, yeah. And then I witnessed the cops being involved. So I was like, well, if I witnessed the cops being involved, that's pretty damn serious. So they're going to have an issue with me. So somebody put a website up, the, and I found it the other night. They just did it last year, I guess, and they've been trying to get, I don't know, I guess they've been trying to sue them and everything else. I think they did the best thing ever because... For me, to get the information of how long have these officers been in LAPD is difficult. Um, I would have to do a lot of research and go through every single single officer and know who I'm looking for to know when they were hired. And what they did was, and it wasn't for the purpose of that, um, but it helped me. Um, they put each and every one of them from each department and then when their hire dates were and all these things and i go oh shit no and that's where it gets dark and scary because when you start seeing that um you see who's doing the cover-ups because those are the people from the initial hires that were a part of raping children raping women okaying that hiding drug crimes, being a part of drug deals being a part of corrupt conduct and they're still working some are still working from the late 1980s, you guys. And I'm like, no wonder. It explains it. Because I kept saying, I go, the gang members are still there. I go, I don't know who they are, though. But they did a rundown. And I was like, oh, shit, no. Because I seen some of the, the higher up. So they what they did was, you know, from the time when they were working originally... They were just like rookies or whatever, you know, and then they, I guess they went up the scale and they became chiefs and, you know, higher ups, you know. So now they have power and control over the information coming through, whereas like I'm trying to get something investigated. Well, they're in the, they're detectives. Yeah. And I'm like, yep. And the detectives back then were actually the corrupt ones. So I was like, yep. And so I was like, now I see it. But even visually, you could tell, like, uh, there's some total white supremacists up in there. And also, there's a Hispanic thing going on where um, the Hispanic gangs in the sheriff's department, uh, we think that they're in tie, like they're together. And a new case came up, which is even more insane. The other case that came up, I was just like, oh, God, I wouldn't even have thought of that thing right there. But that, just be aware. So, um, they got in tie with a mil two military, what was it, two military guys from different countries. Australia and Brit, oh, the UK. And they were also private investigators. And then it was a sheriff's officer and some other sheriff guy. And they did a fake um, bust on this guy to take to thieve $37 million out of him. 
And I go, yeah, so they did that at our work too, the Fe a Fed guy and some other thing. I go, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought of the Australian military and I wouldn't have thought of the UK military and their fucking investigators, which means, so I pointed it up even for the public to know because uh, there's a lot of females in these cases, even in the Weinstein thing. I said, mm, those are government, dude. I don't know. I, they didn't report that properly because they're dumb over there. Um, so government has ties with a lot of people and they have ties with people in other countries as well. And so then they could misuse the investigation thing. But they were talking about how people are showing up at their houses and I know investigators because my dad's a private investigator. So I was like, that's not proper conduct, though. So those are not either A, they're not proper professional investigators or B, they're just corrupt and or C, they are hired. They're just goons from the celebrity camp, right, from their people themselves. And so I'm trying to figure out like who they are because I had it happen here. And I was like, I don't know who those people are, though uh that's not proper because here's the thing a good investigator you wouldn't even know they showed up that's number one they're not there to um try to bully somebody um another thing that they do do though um is serve paperwork so if they're looking for you they're trying to serve you papers so that's another thing uh the rest of it they're just trying to collect information such as like you know could be because they think you did a crime. I don't know. Some of these people go after married couples to see if they're cheating, which I, th 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 that bullshit. Uh, I don't know if my dad did anything like that. They dealt more with criminals, you know, like actual criminals, but, um, but they could be watching and they're like, Oh, we see like they're watching somewhere else. You don't know they're watching you. And they're like, they, Oh, we see him at the house and there's that. So here's evidence that they did that. So they show it to the people that they hired and that's it. They're not there to go bully them and try to taunt them and, and because I was trying to say, go to also puts them in danger because if you're going after a criminal and the criminal suspects that you're that, the criminal can try to go kill you. That's why my dad had to run around with a gun all the time because he's chronically dealing with major criminals. So you never know when that's going to happen. And so, um, no, nobody's going to be doing the conduct that they were speaking of. So I was trying to figure it out. I go, well... It could be some bullshit like that, because if you have an Australian military guy who's also a PI and they're off trying to extort people for money, yes, it would be a person like that. So I was like, yeah, no, I never even I would have never put those things together. But yeah, apparently that's going on. And I said they had dealings with the Asian business guys and it happened to be that, I guess, over there. And I was like, yeah, uh huh. and they were all corrupt, though. They were all corrupt, though. So we don't know what the other person did, but I'm not saying what they did was right because they did an extortion. But you have to understand that pool right there is filth. It is so much filth that I was like, I don't want no part of this kind of shit. Yeah. Like, so if a doctor said this to my face, okay, because they have, they've said a lot of horrible things to my face. Do anything about a doctor's bad bedside manners. That's what they consider this right here this line right here, they just consider it bad bedside manners. I'm like, um, that would have everything to do with their treatment on the patient. And so they just brushed it off as bad bedside manners. That was the exact quote, the exact wording. And I was like, the fuck? Yeah. So they could sit there and say, you're a lunatic. You're nuts. You know, you should get committed. Yeah, totally. They say all kinds of shit. These doctors have said, and countless of things, you guys, I have a million complaints. So the more complaints I make, the more of a problem they think I am, obviously. Um, but are the complaints legit? Hell, fuck yeah. So because nobody reports it, right? So it's like you get this jerk off doctor. And most people are like, I'm never going back on there. And they'll go spread it on, you know, Yelp and say, this guy's a jerk. He did this, right? But technically, you're supposed to go to your medical board and the medical uh, group and make the complaint. But the truth is, at the end of the day, they legitimately told me this. They're like, if you think that anybody's ever going to get fired from any of this, um, that's just not going to happen. And I was like, what is this? Worse than the cops, you guys, because the cops don't even say that. They just pretend like they never did anything wrong. 
um, but then would pretend that it's all serious and that they would totally do something. Oh no, the medical board is completely different. The medical group in this whole universe is completely different. They're like, we actually don't care. And no matter what you complain about, we will never fire anyone. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, it's a completely different war, like what they're telling me. So just so you guys know, I mean, I would almost think that some people do know because they probably try to go at them, but maybe they don't. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I was like, I'm telling you, it's a nightmare. Don't even go, the guy did something wrong. Like, okay, in one of my cases, you guys, and I've said it before, so if you missed it, one case, this doctor gave steroids, right, to me. Didn't, didn't it? Okay, so it was under the pretense of this. So just so you know the setup of these doctors and how they set up this, this unique little setup on me here. So my doctor's like, we need to find out why you have this rash, right? So I had this rash and I never had it before and... It was like internal. It was so horrible. You know, it was probably COVID before they found out it was COVID. Anyway, so I, they go, we're going to send you out to a specialist. We're going to have them, you know, do tests on you. So I go to the specialist or um, I think what happened was they sent me to somebody that was too far away. And then I had to pick somebody more locally. So I picked this other one in my medical group. I think it went like this. So I go down to, down to the city, I don't know, it was like two cities over or something. So I go down to them and they're like mostly for like, I don't know you guys, that, that clinic was a little creepy. So I go in there and they go, okay, we need to give you steroids because we cannot do the test on you because you're too inflamed. Like I'm too, you know, I'm, I'm too allergied up. I can't, like I need an EpiPen at this point. But no, I need, no, I'm too inflamed. So they can't do the test. So they said, we're going to give you steroids and you just take it and then we're going to do the test. Well, they didn't explain what these steroids do. Okay. That's number one. And I kind of had an idea, but they didn't say anything bad about it or anything like that. They're all, you're going to take it for like two. I don't remember. It was for a little while. So I didn't get to go pick it up at the Rite Aid. They mailed it to me. They mailed me this box of steroids. So I had to take steroids for this period of time. And all of a sudden I started turning kind of white. And I felt like I was going to die. Like I felt like my body was like shutting down. Like there was something weird about it. And then I got this bloated face. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck. But this shit is like awful, you know. So anyway, I finish up doing the steroids and I go in and I'm waiting to get this test, these tests, because my doctor's waiting for the result so they could treat me, right? And so I go in and they're like, oh no, we're not going to do that. I'm like, excuse me? And then, um, then they started up with that cancer scare and then it turned into that thing, right? So then they were trying to do a cancer test, like for no fuck reason. And then made it up. And then and then when I went there, um, they decided they didn't want to do it. Okay, so and don't ask me what the hell is going on over here. So then uh, my doctor, I didn't get to go back into my doctor. So my doctor's waiting. Months and months are going by now, right? And I'm like, we don't know what it is, dude. And they put me on steroids for no F reason. Then, so I complained to the medical group. I go, they were supposed to give me um, a test to find out what was wrong. And that's why they gave me steroids. And then they made up that uh, cancer test. And then they backed down out of the cancer test when I went down there to go do it. And so they went to talk to the guy, right? This is the craziest shit ever. He tells him that I backed down out of the cancer test. I go, that did not happen. I will let you know if I did. And I'll tell you the reason why. This did not happen, you guys. Because all they had to do was like do a little cut swab thing, something, something. And it was like no big deal. And um, I was sitting there freaking out because I'm like, do you have cancer? Oh, my God. And then they're like, you know what? I actually don't think it's cancer, so we're not going to do it. That's what he did. So he told a different story to the medical group. He totally lied, like ball face lied. OK, then he lied about this, the steroid thing. Now, the steroid thing should have been so obvious to the medical group because you don't give steroids for this skin problem. OK. There's a skin problem that I had since I was born. 
and it's called K descent and a rather blah blah blah. It's just it's just chicken skin. It literally is nothing. Okay, it's literally nothing. It's just a uh textury skin thing where um it's not even itchy. It's not even anything. It just doesn't look like uh smooth skin, okay? So um I've always had that. That's never been a thing. Okay. Well, they told them that they gave me steroids for that. And I'm like, no. And they said they diagnosed me with that. And I go, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. That skin problem does not cause the rash that I had. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you do not give steroids for that because it doesn't have a cure. Like, there's no thing to it. Um, the only thing that you could do for it, um, there was some type of, you could try to do, do lotions and it might smooth it out, but that's the worst of the skin problem. It doesn't do anything. And so you would never give steroids for that. So they lied and then said they gave me steroids for that and you would never give st steroids for that skin condition. And nor did they, uh, diagnose me with that because I wasn't there for that. Okay. That's a different, that's a completely different thing. I'm there for a rash that had nothing to do with that. And they were, oh my God. So then the medical group goes, oh, I didn't know that. Cause they're not doctors. The guy that was, I was talking to, he's like, he tried to tell me the people on the board are, um, uh, basically a bunch of idiots. He didn't say that, but they're like, not. They're supposed to be doctors. Like, they're supposed to be people that are well aware. Like, you wouldn't give ketamine to somebody that came in for a migraine, right? So, like, if you see that from a doctor, like, it's supposed to be an alert. Hello? So, basically, that's what that was. And he's like, you're right. You know what? We're going to, um, I'm going to send back everything that you just said. And then guess what? You never heard from them again. I go, this is ridiculous. I keep going back and forth with the medical group. And then I end up going to the medical board and the medical board keeps covering up. Now they won't even call back because they're in such deep shit. They just literally covered up a sex crime. So, I mean, that was like the worst out of all these things. But there was actually more sexual abuse actually throughout this whole period. And um, most of it was, I think a lot of it was more out of pocket than it was me under the, the state medical thing so it was out of pocket doctors that were um abusing the gyno thing yes oh god yeah that's a horrible nightmare to wake up to going oh i was actually sexually abused the whole time and they made money every time i went in because it's out of pocket so they're getting money from me every time i walk in so they're like oh we need you back oh so when i go back i gotta pay another shell out out of my pocket right mm -hmm. making up for me to go back in is the most disgusting thing that had been happening throughout this whole thing. They tried to make justifications for it all the way to the point to where they finally had to do a biopsy on me and they're like, you're totally fine. And the minute that that happened, it like came down. And I was like, oh my God, I just literally went through this thing and the whole time I thought this and that and this and the other. And then I realized, like, number one, what part of the problem was. But two, that I was being sexually abused through these doctors. And they were also making extra money off me by doing that. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, that's quite a thing here. So who are the doctors? That's another problem. Because I found one of them. Um, but a lot of these doctors were just out of pocket. I was in an area and I went in locally and went to somewhere. And we're talking over three decades, right? So in that span. And I used to go every year because that's what they said I had to do. And so when I told the doctors this, they're like, who told you that? I go, all the doctors. They're like, is there something? They must have had some. Re I go, no, they didn't. That's what they said. Yeah. And it came down. I was like, oh, my God.